Hi, my name is Michaela Jarrett, and today I'm joined with Commander Matt Polson. Why don't you start by telling us a little about yourself, like your name, your age, and the community where you live? Well, I, uh, my name is, again, Matthew uh, Polson. Uh, I was, grew up in uh, Flint, Michigan, a uh, family of four. I got uh, two older sisters and an older brother. I'm the, the baby in the family, uh, strong Navy tradition. Had a sister join the Navy. She married a sailor. My brother was in the Navy. I was in the Navy. Uh, I enlisted in 1988 and, uh, and been in the Navy ever since. I just retired last September. Um, prior to service, what was your occupation? Well, high school jobs, really. Um, I started out as a uh, young shoe salesman at Kinney Shoe Store and uh, graduated to a, a stock boy at the uh, local farmer's market, uh, stocking shelves and at the, at the Frank's West Side Market there in Flint. Um, were you drafted or did you volunteer? Well, oh, I absolutely volunteered. As a matter of fact, I think I was a driving force for my older siblings to join the Navy, gung-ho through and through. Uh, uh, I had posters all over the wall of aviation. I had model airplanes, much like this, but I didn't build this one. Uh, model airplanes and ships, and, and you could tell where, where my occupation was going to be after I left the high school. Um, were you married before, during, or after your service? Uh, after I started, uh, I got married shortly after. I married my high school sweetheart. We, we actually met, and this is the funny story, in Navy Junior ROTC. So uh, she had uh, joined the unit, and she was learning how to be a member of the drill team, and I was uh, one of those senior members, and, uh, well, our eyes met, and there's your, there's your romance story right there. Um, what branch of service did you serve in? Navy. What's the highest rank that you have attained? Uh, one, the one I am wearing right now. That's the occupation I'm serving in right now is the uh, Senior Naval Science Instructor at uh, Alexander Central High School. Where was the location of your basic training? I started out with Great Lakes. Uh, a great story about Great Lakes is the fact that uh, I went there every week, or I mean every year for at least a week um, during the summer during uh, basic leadership training. And by the time I went to boot camp as an adult, I already knew half the company commanders there, so they, they knew me quite well by the time I arrived. So, uh, were there any other bases that you were stationed at throughout your service? Several bases. Uh, it's, it's one of our prides of our, our, our family. We've, we've moved everywhere. Uh, there's Texas, Florida, California, Tennessee. Um, even one, during one deployment, my family went up to visit family in Michigan and stayed there until I got back. And uh, then we moved to Jacksonville. Um, what ships were you assigned to? Mostly squadrons. Uh, the squadrons I was assigned to were, were the uh, helicopters, the small helicopters of the variety that, uh, that serve on small ships. Um, the H-60 and H-2 were two of my major platforms, um, and they I had deployments aboard the uh, USS Deo, uh, Stump, Halliburton, uh, USS uh, Ponce, uh, several, several ships. Um, at one time or another, when they, they had a mission and they looked for a helicopter, our squadron provided detachments with uh, pilots, air crewmen, rescue swimmers, and the maintenance personnel that uh, would, would uh, take these helicopters out and, and serve on those ships. Did you make any friends in service? And if so, do you still keep in touch? Absolutely. Uh, my brothers and sisters in the service will always be a lifelong, uh, lifelong friends of mine. Uh, you, you, learn, you meet a lot of different people from around the world and uh, a lot of people uh, that you stay friends with, uh, I guess, forever, and everybody would probably say that. Um, are there any superior officers that you remember, and if so, why? I remember uh, a lot of officers, uh, whether they were uh, they're in a leadership style, whether I agreed with that leadership style or not, I learned from both. Um, there's ones that stand out a lot, and, uh, and I have a lot to be thankful for. Um, there's uh, a commander, Wayne Tunick. Uh, he went on to be a captain. Uh, John Funk uh, was one of my detachment OICs. He went on to be a captain of uh, the USS Bonhomme Richard. Um, those people, when I was young enlisted, uh, uh, you know, mentored me and uh, guided me in the right direction. Uh, uh, as they would say, a kick in the butt would be a kick forward. And, uh, I've received many kick forwards. Did you serve stateside, overseas, or a little bit of both? A little bit of both. Um, you know, my family will testify that, you know, uh, especially Madison being my oldest, uh, for as many years she's been alive, I've been underway for over three years of those uh, years. So 
Um, I've been to uh, 43 countries and 84 different ports of call around the world. Um, if wartime, which wars? Um, early in my career was Operation Desert Storm, um, and then uh, uh, the Iraq War after that, Afghan campaigns, uh, all those things where I was uh, involved in. Um, can you relate skirmishes or battles you were involved in? Uh, mostly just uh, operations of the special variety. Um, as With helicopters, we, we are tasked to do a lot of stuff that uh, in the clandestine variety, um, but small skirmishes, not big, huge campaigns. Not with not with these uh, pieces of equipment. Did you or your unit ever come under attack? Um, well, in Kabul, uh, we were constantly uh, harassed, uh, either by small improvised explosive devices or things they threw over the wall to uh, harass us. But uh, uh, it, it caused us inconvenience more than it did much damage. Uh, but we were always on guard for that. So. Um, what weapons were you assigned to or special equipment that you used? Uh, mostly helicopters. Uh, this is my love of my life right there. Uh, <laughs> like I said, it started out with the H2C Sprite, um, which was a Vietnam War era uh, helicopter, uh, small, maneuverable, retractable landing gear. Um, great little helicopter. Uh, we, I was actually assigned to Norfolk to a squadron that uh, I had orders to for five years, and then they decided that cold turkey that the, the, the helicopter's done. So uh, I packed our bags and we moved on to, to uh, Jacksonville and I started flying the 860 Bravos uh, and did that for another uh, five or six years until I was picked up for a commissioning program. Uh, and then went to flight school and basically moved from the back seat where I was doing a rescue swimmer's job and, and to the front seat where I was piloting the uh, aircraft. Um, were there any poor conditions or hardships that you faced during your service? I don't recall too many hardships. Uh, the only thing you can complain about, what do they say, a complaining sailor is a happy sailor? Um, you know, when the evaporators break or something and they need water for the ship's boilers or water for the ship's uh, steam plant, uh, things get shut down like the, the dishwasher or the scullery as we mm -hmm. call it on the ship and then showers. So uh, if you have to go six days without a shower, you know, I'm just glad we're not in port. We, we don't tend to smell too good after that point. But uh, that was probably the only inconvenience, and if that, that wasn't much of a hardship. Um, were you in any hairy situations or close calls? Uh, by the nature of what I flew, yes. Yeah. <laughs> Helicopters are, uh, inherently don't want to fly. They, they uh, through uh, a series of different opposing forces, they get off the ground somehow, and they got a lot of moving parts, and, and sometimes those parts break. Uh, one night in particular, uh, we were doing over Chesapeake Bay, we were flying over Chesapeake Bay, and then one of the gearbox uh, oil plugs came off the bottom. It's at the actual bottom, it's called the scavenge, and then and if it comes off there, all the oil comes out, and it came out on my head because I was in the back of the aircraft. So um, they were up front, I recall, debating whether or not that gauge was correct, and I came up front dripping oil and said, it's correct. <laughs> So uh, we definitely started scooting toward, uh, we were about 15 minutes away from land, and we didn't know how long that gearbox would last without oil. But uh, I guess in the good old 50s, they built that aircraft uh, to, to withstand it. And we actually landed uh, at a corner, in the middle of the night, it's about 11 o'clock, uh, at the corner of a, uh, a fire station and uh, a bar. So next to a gazebo, we found a little spot to park, and we shut down, and, and uh, it was quiet. Nobody came out. Uh, and then somebody came out of the bar and rubbed their eyes and, and said, there's a helicopter on here, and everybody from out, out in, that was in the establishment came out, and we started getting a crowd. And, uh, and I remember it was the night before Halloween. Uh, I went to the fire department and said, we need crowd control because we're, we're developing a, a crowd. And he said, Halloween's not till tomorrow, son, because I was still in my flight gear. I said, no, really, we just parked our helicopter out here. So they came out here with their, uh, their fire truck and, and the patrons in the bar bought us pizza and brought out uh, coffee for us. Offered us uh, an adult beverage, but uh, we figured we'd better not. How did you handle being away from home and family? Uh, you, you handle it. It's not pleasant. Um, you know, there's hardships at home. There's hardships being away. You miss your family. Um, luckily, I had a, a family support system at home that uh, uh, took care of 
everything in my absence. Uh, you, you can't say enough about uh, when spouses, what the spouses deal with when, when a, uh, one of the parents are away. Um, it's extremely tough and uh, I couldn't even imagine. Uh, I know how hard it was for me not to be able to hold my kids or, or just see them in the pictures um, and watch them grow up through photos uh, and, and hear about all the, uh, you know, when they're sick or whether they're having a good time and they're doing it without you. Um, that's, it tears at your heart. And uh, it's a special breed out there, um, I guess I'll include myself in that, that are able to do that for the number of years uh, and still uh, survive on the other side. So. Did faith play a part in helping you cope with your time in service? Uh, absolutely. Uh, what, faith is what helps you go on. You know, it's, uh, you, you've got to go to the Lord and, 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 and thank Him for the blessings you have. And, uh, and the, it's an honor to be able to, to do what I do or do what I did and, uh, and, and have the joy that I have in my life. I've been blessed. What did you do for fun or during your leaves? We mostly, <laughs> mostly visit family. We'd pile in the car and go visit family, and uh, especially during the holidays when you had some time off, because you know you don't get to see them. Especially the places where we were, like if we were on the West Coast or we were down in Texas. So most of your vacations probably chewed up just traveling. Mm -hmm. And then once you know, like I said, I came from Michigan. Um, if we went up to Michigan and, and saw her side of the family, we were on the west side of the of, of the mitten there. And if we wanted to visit my family, we had to go to the other side of the mitten right there and then ping pong around. And, and if people were working during the week, uh, um, you know, you had to cram everything you had on the weekends. Mm -hmm. So uh, uh, I always said it was it was a visit, but it wasn't much of a vacation because you end up being more exhausted than you uh, than you started. So, um, but lately, <laughs> after retirement, uh, I think we've uh, done a lot more visiting this place is just for us. So uh, we're happy to say that uh, we're. We're seeing North Carolina a lot. So, did you receive any awards, medals, or commendation? Um, yeah, well, I'm, I'm, I'm wearing most of them. Mm -hmm. um, uh, the highest one you see there is, is the uh, Navy Marine Corps Medal, and that was for a uh, 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 heroism uh, after a, a storm at night at sea. Uh, we rescued some merchant marines that their boat had cracked in half and capsized. Uh, their load shifted in the waves, and uh, the crew uh, that wasn't stuck on board uh, that bailed out. Uh, we joined the, we actually stumbled upon the rescue because we heard uh, a conversation on Bridge to Bridge Channel 16 between a Venezuelan and a Colombian Coast Guard cutter, and they were actually speaking in English. So that's the only way I could figure out that there was a rescue going on. And uh, we asked if we could get in on that action, and uh, they certainly invited us because we had a radar platform. Um, so we were looking for targets, and we were using night vision goggles. Even, even in the early uh, 90s, we had a uh, one that the ship let us borrow. We didn't have one assigned to our squadron. But um, one interesting story is the first, uh, the first uh, of the of the merchant crew that we found were uh, both uh, deceased. They were f floating face down, and uh, their battery was dead in their the orange. Gumby suits, um, but it, to the naked eye you couldn't see the light uh, that it was producing. But on NVGs, NVGs amplify that light, and we saw them at 10 miles. Uh, we saw them at 10 miles because um, we made a bearing out to where we saw it, and there was no radar context that that, uh, that would be in that area that made any sense. So we started heading that direction, and we traveled 10 miles before we found the, the both of them and uh, and, and brought them. Uh, back to the ship. Um, your, what has your occupation been since leaving the service? Well, immediately after, well, when we decided that we were going to retire after 24 years, and I say we as a family, um, uh, it kind of made sense that round robin, I enjoy teaching, I enjoy coaching. It made sense to me to return to where it all started. It was an NGROTC. So, uh, I made an application uh, to be certified, and then once the certification process was complete, um, I applied to uh, four schools in this general area mm -hmm. that we knew that we we were interested in retiring, um, and made an arrangements to interview at my uh, my number one choice, <laughs> which was here first, and 
uh, what I hired on and started working uh, last summer. Were any of your family members besides your siblings or ancestors in the service? Uh, at, yeah, yes. Um, my sister, uh, my middle sister, Pat, she became an air traffic controller. My brother was a boiler technician on the USS, uh, uh, well, you, you know, Colonel probably helped me, uh, Puget Sound, yeah. Um, Puget Sound, and uh, he served for five years in the uh, Desert Storm. And then uh, shortly after he enlisted, when I enlisted, I was able to get orders to Norfolk because he was there. So they kept our families together. And my sister was stationed there at, uh, uh, at one of the bases. And uh, so we were all right there. And she started her family. And, and uh, so it was kind of neat seeing you know, our family in one little area where I didn't have to travel mm -hmm. to go see him. So it was pretty nice having that. Um, if applicable, name your siblings, spouse, and children. Um, I mentioned my, my sister Pam, she lives up, my eldest sister Pam, she still lives up in Michigan in Bay City. She's got a family there. And my sister Pat, uh, her, and, uh, she and her husband are now retired from the Navy down in, uh, down in uh, Milton, Florida. Mm -hmm. um, and they have uh, three kids as well. Uh, a, it's my brother, he lives uh, in, I think I want to say Smithfield, not, not Smithfield, but, uh, um, well, it's east of Charlotte, mm -hmm. <laughs> east of Charlotte in the Locust County area um, on the border there, and uh, I live in North Carolina. And my, my wife, uh, Brandy, um, she's a uh, hospice nurse at the Catawba Valley Regional. Um, and um, I have my Madison, she's my 17-year-old uh, right now, and uh, Megan, she's 14. Carson, uh, my son, he's about to turn six next month. And then my uh, youngest daughter, Mia, she just turned four, so. Uh, Are you active in any veterans organizations? Yes, I am. Uh, the VFW, uh, right away, as soon as I got here, I, I signed on to that organization. Um, uh, let's see, the Veterans Organization of Alexander County, uh, heavily involved in there, just uh, based on the fact that I'm retired and I'm affiliated with them, because mm -hmm. our, our unit's very active with the veterans organizations here. What would you say to youth today interested in the armed forces? Definitely, definitely, uh, if you get an opportunity and, and to, to serve in the military, do so. It'll enrich you in ways you never thought possible. Um, it's an honor to serve in the military, and if you get a chance to do it, you know, not everybody can get in. Um, certainly the, uh, the, the qualifications to get in are much harder. Um, it's not was it wasn't your your father's army anymore. It's they can take your pick. They don't have to beat the streets anymore and look for recruits. People are coming to them, uh, so it's it's tough, and, and especially in this job market. So if you get a privilege of going in, uh, like I said, it would be an honor uh, an honor to serve, a privilege to serve, and then you would pick up a trade uh, of uh, not only leadership, but when you get out, you'll be. Uh, a much better person and much more qualified to work for any job you'd like to. It's been great having you with us. Thank you. Thank you very much. I appreciate it.